Hello and welcome to Every Awesome 80s Movie. This is where we analyze just about every movie that came out in the 80s and we're looking for all the awesome parts. We're starting things off with a deep dive of the cult classic Blood Beach. Blood Beach was written and directed by Jeffrey Bloom and it was released on January 23rd, 1981. Full disclosure, I was 10 years old and I did not see Blood Beach in the movie theater. I was terrified of the movie trailer. I was also scared of this poster, which, you know, to be fair, I think it still looks a little bit scary today. Underneath the Blood Beach title, you will notice this slogan, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, you can't get to it. And that was sort of a whimsical shout out to the Jaws franchise. So I didn't watch it when I was a kid, but my friend Joshua and I watched it last week, and here's what the plot is about. Harry works for the Port of Los Angeles, and he loves living on the beach. So do his neighbors, until one of them is killed by a mysterious monster that lives underneath the sand. That poor lady's daughter shows up, wondering where her mother is. Harry knows her. They have a history together, I think. But Harry already has a serious girlfriend. But that girlfriend is gobbled up by the sand monster. The police do get involved, but they are basically so clueless as to what kind of creature they are dealing with that the police chief, played by John Saxon, asks the officers to go home, talk to their wives, ask random people what they should do next. The coroner goes from someone who believes that the poor dog was decapitated by a human to believing that there are some type of strange monstrosities beneath the sand. Turns out he's right, but he sure is weird and creepy about it all. A romantic plot develops between Ruth and Harry, and what's interesting about these two is that they are never in any real danger. It's just all of his friends and neighbors that are in trouble. There's also a strange number of political and economic subplots. Burt Young and Otis Young, no relation, play a couple of officers who bicker back and forth while they occasionally talk to the lady who runs the hot dog stand. Burt Young spends a lot of the movie telling people how he would do things if he was still in Chicago. We do that in Chicago. We got associations to handle any contingency. Chicago, they give them a medal. Now, if this was in Chicago... He reminds me of that girl from the Magic School Bus who just won't shut up about her old school. At my old school, we were never allowed to end up in the toilet. So basically, the humans in this movie eventually figure out that there's some kind of terrible creature under the sand, and for a long time they don't know exactly what to do about it, so they eventually resort to dynamite. And that seems to blow up the creature, or does it? The film itself might not rise to the level of awesomeness, but here are a few awesome things about it. It's produced in part by a man named Sir Run Run Shaw. If you've watched Blade Runner over and over again, you might recognize that name because he also produced Blade Runner. This man and his brothers are responsible for the early golden age of Chinese silent film cinema. In the 1970s, he was made a knight by Queen Elizabeth. Over his lifetime, he donated over $6 billion to charities. Here's one of his hospitals. And they even named an asteroid belt after him. And he lived to the age of 106. Sure, these all sound like amazing achievements, but the feather in his cap is this film, Blood Beach. We mentioned Burt Young, and you might remember him from the Rocky franchise. But Otis Young has also had a fascinating career as well. He was one of the first African-American actors to appear in Hollywood westerns. The main love interest was played by Mariana Hill, who appeared in Star Trek as Dr. Helen Noel. Lauren. Yes. This isn't right, Captain. And David Huffman, the actor who played Harry, came to an unfortunate ending about four years after the making of this film. He was sitting in his van, playing the bagpipes, 
Then he saw a suspected burglar running through the park. He gave chase, caught up with the suspect, then was stabbed with a screwdriver. It's a sad, sobering thought to think that one moment you could be sitting in your van playing your bagpipes, and the next moment you're gone. In the same way, you could be happily walking across a sandy beach, and then all of a sudden, you're gone. In my not-so-humble opinion, Bert Young wins the award for participating in the most wonderfully awful scene in this film. And I'm going to show you that wonderfully awful scene, but first, you have to have some context. So I need you to watch this scene. Here's a little scene. It's about two-thirds through the movie, and this innocent metal detectorist is going to perish because of the Blood Beach monster. Take a look. All right, so he gets gobbled up, and then a couple scenes later, the metal detectorist's wife shows up at the police department and is interviewed by Detective Royko. And for the next two minutes, she tries to describe every detail about her husband's attire. And, well, let's just watch. I'm very sorry to have to put you through this, Mrs. This is Hench. Hench. But if you could describe what Mr. Hench was wearing when he left home, you'd help our investigation very much. Okay. How about shoes? We'll start from the ground up. Was he wearing shoes? Oh, yes. Um, he was wearing his, his white mesh. They were slipped on casuals with the, you know, the kind that had the rope. So. Oh, I know the kind. And, uh, and brown socks. The uh, nylon executive type. Pardon me, madam. Not familiar with those socks. Oh, I'm sorry. They're the, um, they're the kind that come up fairly high so that if you're, uh, if you're wearing a suit, you should happen to cross your legs. Well, then your, your leg won't be showing. Okay, go on. Uh, blue and red Madras Bermudas, bleeding Madras. They were kind of old, but, you know, they were his favorite pair. They were still in good condition, but, you know, how with Madras, if after a few washings, you, you know, colors kind of start to fade together. Uh -huh. That happens to me. Uh, any jewelry? Yes, um, he's wearing a Florentine gold pinky ring. It was kind of like yours, except it wasn't smooth like that, and it had a, a tiger's eye and a black-on-black -black luminous dial electronic 17 jewel scuba watch with a matching black band, you know, the band with the kind of little holes cut out. Okay, and the shirt? He was wearing a T-shirt. Any color? It was aquamarine. Aquamarine? You know, kind of light blue-green. Uh, was there a certain patent to it, or was it just a plain old T-shirt? Oh, a plain T-shirt, but it had a printing on it, kind of block letters in two rows, bright red. Yeah. It said, need gas, eat beans. He has a good sense of humor. Sense of humor. So considering this is supposed to be a scary, albeit campy, horror film, there's a lot of slow parts in Blood Beach. I don't know that it rises to the level of awesomeness, but I do know that after Blood Beach, many other cinematic experiments seem to include sand-based monsters. Throughout the 80s, we get the sandworms from Dune, we get the sandworms from Beetlejuice, and we get those trimmer monsters from Trimmers. And I love all three of those monsters. Do I love the Blood Beach monster? No, not really. It looks like an artichoke went bad. The best performance by far is delivered by John Saxon, and I'm actually sincere about this. I really enjoyed all of his monologues. Had her mind blown halfway to the moon simply because she was foolish enough to lie down on this particular beach. Never would happen in Chicago. You might know John Saxon from Enter the Dragon, co-starring Bruce Lee. Or perhaps more likely, you might know him from that other spooky 80s movie, Nightmare on Elm Street. 
But did you know that John Saxon is no stranger to beach movies? Back in the 50s, he was a teen icon, and he appeared in many teenage surfing movies. And when I found that out, I realized that's what I feel like is missing from Blood Beach. Where's all that teenage fun that we had in those old-fashioned beach movies from the 1950s and 60s? Without further ado, here's a brand new trailer for Blood Beach Party. Hey all you cool cats and swinging chicks, welcome to a teenage dreamland of moonlit waves and non-stop dancing on the beach. And did somebody scream for help? Don't worry about it. It's Blood Beach Party, the feel good most of the time event of the summer. It's a singing and a surfing good time. A mad musical ball with sand dwelling monsters. So let's go surfing and a swinging a screaming and a dying. In a movie filled with silly surfer dudes, brainless bikers, incompetent cops, romance, and oh my god, what is that? Blood Beach Party, love is in the air, and terror is down below. <laughs> 